What's up, what's up, what's up, Warrior family? I am coming to you with our Warrior Wednesday word. Happy Thanksgiving Eve to you. I hope that you are not overdoing it so that you will have some spoons and energy left for tomorrow's festivities. Today, I am doing a special edition for Warrior Wednesday. We are going to talk about the 25 things not to say to a chronic pain warrior. So as you prepare to be with your family, I know some of us have some anxiety and are dreading sitting around the table, socializing, whatnot, because you know somebody is going to say the wrong thing. Mm. So I want you to stay tuned, listen up, and I am going to get right into it. All right. Let me do my little disclaimer. I had a procedure yesterday. Um, they did um, nerve ablation and trigger point shots uh, on yesterday. So most of my shots are in my um, posterior, my benupsy. That's what my baby calls it. So I can't sit in a hard chair just yet. So I'm coming to you live from the bed, not making excuses about why I couldn't do it. I'm in the bed, put on my good robe, even brush my hair up into a puff just for my warrior family. All right. So let's get into it. Y'all know I got my trusty notebook. You always need to have you one because brain fog is real. So I had to write down all the thoughts that come into my head. All right. 25 things not to say to someone with an invisible illness or chronic pain warrior. First of all, you don't look sick. I know that seemed like a compliment, you know, but it's not. It's not because we know we don't look sick. That doesn't mean that our pain is not real. Number two, I get tired too. We know you get tired, but tired is different from fatigue. You can rest and feel better. We can rest all day and all night, and we still don't feel any better. Third, you can't do blank. Don't put limitations on me. I may do it differently. I might take a little bit more time, but I can do something. Okay? Don't put limitations on me. My illness has already done that. Uh, maybe you're not getting enough rest. Again, we can rest all day and all night, and it still doesn't make a difference. Number five, must be nice not to work. Do you think I don't want to work? Do you think I don't want to have my own money? Do you think I don't want to have my own income? I would much rather be at a job and have my own income than be at home sick. You should try, insert whatever vitamin, herb, snake oil, crystal, potion, meditation. Trust me, we have tried anything and everything, hoping that it would help. It has not. We thank you for your recommendations, but wish that you would keep it to yourself. Because it makes it seem like you are putting the blame on the pain warrior. Like we just haven't done the right thing yet. That's not true. All right. Number seven. I hope you feel better or it'll get better soon. Say it with me. Chronic. Chronic. It's not going to get better soon. Just don't say nothing. Okay. If you have to say something, you want to be uplifted, then say, I hope tomorrow's better for you. That's a possibility. But don't tell me I feel better soon or get well soon. Mm -mm. Um, if you exercise or lose weight, then you'll feel better. We realize that exercise has its benefits and endorphins. We realize that carrying excess weight puts excess um, pressure on our joints. But the fact of the matter is 
We are doing the very best we can. We don't need you to add to it. Number nine, and it may seem like a good question. The question, how are you? Mm. When people say that, I immediately begin to race in my mind. My mind begins to race. Do they want the truth or do they want a lie? Do they really want to know how I feel? Are they going to think I'm a pessimist if I tell them how I really feel? So, if you must ask, then just say, how are you feeling today? And then actually listen for an answer. Okay? Number 10, it's all in your head. If you would just think positively and stop focusing on it, you'd feel better. The fact of the matter is, it's very difficult to think positive when you are constantly in pain. I've explained it to people like a ticker tape. You know how you watch um, the news shows and they have all these ticker tapes going through the bottom? So, you're watching the news show, but then you're also trying to watch that ticker tape? Well, for a chronic pain warrior, life is going on. That's our show. But pain is that constant ticker tape. So it's that constant distraction. Yes, we try to put our mind on other things. And sometimes we're actually successful. But, again, we don't need the criticism. We don't need the criticism. That is the thing. Okay. Number 11. Comparing your acute pain to my chronic pain. I try to be compassionate because I realize that you think that what you're going through is really big. But the fact of the matter is, my pain is probably 10 times worse and it's every day and there's no hope of it stopping. So when you get sick with the flu or when you have a migraine, unless they're chronic migraines because that is true. But if you have a headache once every three or four months, it's not the same as knowing that every day I'm going to get up and feel this pain. That's not the same. Don't compare it. It's okay to say, I I uh, can't even imagine what you're going through. That's okay. At least it gives credence to what we're saying. Number 12, you're too young to feel this way. Followed closely by number 13, it's just old age. When we get old, arthritis kicks in. It is not the same thing. Yes, I, for example, have arthritis. But that's not the same as the nerve pain. I have the, the arthritis on top of the fibromyalgia pain. And they're all together different. Okay? And when I was young, I heard, you're too young to feel like this. And as I get older, I hear, it's just old age. Number 14, how can you be tired? You stay in the bed all day. I've already explained that's what fatigue is. One, I stay in the bed all day, but I may or may not be sleeping because the pain prevents restorative rest. Okay, so even though I'm asleep, it's not restorative rest. I know how you feel. No, you don't. No, you don't. No, you don't. Even if you have the same thing that I have, you have no way of knowing if you feel the same way I do. Some people have fibromyalgia and they are climbing Mount Everest. Some people have fibromyalgia and they are crying in pain every day. Everybody's pain is different. Some people have what you have and they are at the top end of the spectrum and they are living their best life. And some people have what you have and they feel as though they might die. Okay? You don't know how I feel. Again, best line. I can't imagine how that must feel. What do you do all day? Oftentimes, this comes from a loving spouse 
who ask things like, what's for dinner? Did you get a chance to do X, Y, Z? Did you get a chance to do A, B, C? Uh, no. So then, even if they don't say, what do you do all day? You know that's what they're thinking. And it takes everything in you not to just explode. So, don't ask that question. Number 17. I know someone who has blank and they seal blank. Again, there are levels to the spectrum. Lady Gaga has fibromyalgia. But she was twerking and working and 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 in excellent shape before the fibromyalgia so she may feel differently than somebody else i don't know because i don't know how she feels but don't compare me to someone else i am doing my best i'm doing my best you just have to trust that you take too many meds I've heard this. I don't like this. I take a lot of medicines, but that's because I am trying my very best to be my very best and to keep my pain and fatigue at a manageable level. Keep your thoughts and your judgments to yourself. It's hard enough to go to the pharmacist or go wherever and they're looking at you like you're an addict. We don't need the people that we love to add to that. Next, maybe you're just depressed. Depression is a large part of chronic pain, chronic illness, and visible illness. But my depression is not what's causing my pain. My pain is what's causing my depression. I ain't going to say nothing else about it. Number 20. If I had... I would, you know what? You don't know what you would do. And it's okay to say that. I don't know what I would do if I had to face pain every day. I can't even imagine. I'm going to be calling your name in prayer and hoping that your best days are yet to come. That's a powerful statement, especially if you mean it. And it gives validity to what I'm saying. If you don't know the words of a prayer, if you're not a praying person, then say, I can't imagine what it's like to be in pain every day, but I will have you in my thoughts. I'll be sending lots of love and energy to you and let me know if I can do anything for you. Beautiful statement, especially if it's heartfelt and true. Don't tell me you know how I feel. Don't tell me what you would be doing because you don't know. And I didn't know. When I didn't hear this, I had no idea what it was like. All right. Maybe you should look for a part-time job and get out the house. Again, don't you think I want to work? How can you look for a part-time job when you cannot depend on your body? You don't know from day to day how you'll feel. You don't know from day to day if you'll be able to keep up that schedule, even if it is two or three hours a day. Some days, it's all I can do to get up and go to the bathroom. Don't add, take a shower, brush my teeth. That's an excellent day. Okay? I cannot count on my body, which means that you cannot count on me to show up at work every day or that that employer cannot count on me to show up to work every day because I cannot count on my body. I don't know how I feel from day to day or even moment to moment. Number 22. Why do you walk with a cane some days, but some days you're fine? Because some days I feel better than others. Myself? Some days I use a cane. Some days I use a walker. Some days I'm on a mobility scooter. Some days I'm in a wheelchair and my nephew is pushing me around the store. And some days I can't even get out the bed. It just depends on how manageable my pain is at that time. I can never walk long distances without my cane. I can never stand without my cane. 
So for me, standing in the line in the store, that's an I can't do that. So I can use the buggy to walk around. I may not need my cane, but when it comes to standing, I can't really do that. So that's why I need a mobility scooter. Some days I can't even use the car. Okay, so a lot of it depends on how long the line is, how much shopping I have to do, how far I have to walk, how far I had to walk in the parking lot to even get to the store to get to the mobility scooter. All these things are factors. And at the end of the day, the real truth is, I ain't got to explain it to you. All right? I know you don't want to tell your loved ones that. So just send them this video. Miss D said... We ain't got to explain nothing to you. Next. Number 23. You just trying to get disability. One, disability takes a very long time. I'm going on three years now. And I have not gotten a check yet. Okay? Not only have I not gotten a check, I have not had a decision yet. So... Why would I take off my job to sit with no income for three years? That's one. Number two, even when it comes through, it's about a fourth of my income. Why would I leave my job to get a fourth of my income? Those dollars don't make sense. Nobody's faking illness to get a, a disability check. Okay? Nobody getting rich off a disability check. Now, next thing, 24, maybe you need to try a different doctor. Again, I've tried all the things I have, I can, and once I find a healthcare provider that I'm comfortable with and that knows me and I don't have to constantly explain my pain, I don't want to leave. I believe that they're providing the best care for me. This is a chronic illness and it is not a science if you took 10 people with fibromyalgia or 10 people with ankylosing spondylitis or 10 people whatever chronic pain disorder you have they would all be taking different medicines it is not an exact science some people respond differently to different medicines so going to a different doctor means starting all over and means being in a considerable amount of pain while they try to figure out how to treat me. I do not want to try a different doctor. Unless I'm unhappy. Now, if I tell you I'm unhappy with my doctor, feel free to make recommendations. Otherwise, keep it to yourself. And last but not least, the top thing that we don't want to hear, get over it. Don't you think I tried? Don't you think I want to? I really wish I could. Don't tell me that. If a chronic pain warrior decides to be open with you about what they're going through, I've already given you your blanket answer, your blanket response. Yeah, you two of them. Depending on whether you're a praying person or not, that's your standard answer. Anything else, we don't really want to hear. Because it took everything we had to just show up today. We need you to be positive. We need you to be encouraging. We need you to be empathetic and compassionate. No suggestions necessary. Do not offer suggestions. Unless we ask. Okay. I love y'all warrior family. Make sure you share this. Share this with your loved ones. Share this with your friends. Share this with your support system. Your village. Whoever it is that's standing with you. Whoever it is that you may encounter. During this holiday season. Share it. Share it. Share it. Share it. You ain't got to say it. Because Miss D will say it. I'm going to give it to them straight with no chaser. All right? 
I love y'all. I hope and pray that you have a very, very happy Thanksgiving and that you are not exhausted at the end of the day. Love y'all.